Jazzcast Pros. This generation especially, Generation Z and, and Generation Alpha and all these new generations that are coming in, and they're very blunt, direct, and they have to hear the honest truth about who God is and how God sees our mental health and how we should see our own mental health. And so I think this conversation about faith and mental health, suicide, all of these hard conversations that we avoid can't be avoided anymore because the world's not avoiding it. And most certainly our adversary is not avoiding it. And people need to be well informed about how God sees these things. And throughout everything that you go through, God loves you unconditionally. Welcome to Igniting Hope Radio, where we realize the differences between equity and equality. Here at the Buffalo Center for Health Equity, quite frankly, we don't want equality. We want equity. Here in Buffalo, New York, 12 years of life is lost by each person living in specific areas of Buffalo because of their race. Zero percent of health should be determined by where a person lives. We want equity. The only way to change hearts and minds is through emotional engagement, to get people behind it and continuously support the concept with facts. This is our aim and our mission weekly as you join Pastor George on Igniting Hope Radio. Hello. This is Pastor George Nicholas, uh, chairman of the African-American Health Equity Task Force and the Buffalo Center for Health Equity, and just a general friend of our community. You have uh, logged on to and tuned into the Igniting Hope podcast. And today we're going to continue in our conversations about our own mental health within our community. Buffalo Center for Health Equity is, is committed, it's our mission to eliminate race-based health disparities within this region. And that doesn't only include our physical health. We want to make sure that we're we're healthy, mind, body, and spirit. So today we have a, a, a tremendous guest that's with us, uh, not a guest, but a friend, uh, Reverend Edward Jackson, who is the senior pastor at uh, Friendship Baptist Church right here in the city of Buffalo. And, and we're gonna talk about faith and our mental health, and just really what's going on with us and our community. Let me start with a paragraph from, I want to start with, I'm reading this tremendous book called The Unapologetic Guide to Black Mental Health by Dr. Rita Walker. It's a fantastic book. And the subtitle is Navigating an Unequal System, Learn Tools for Emotional Wellness and Get the Help You Deserve. And we'll post the title of this book on our website, buffalohealthequity.org. And we would encourage you to don't order this book off of Amazon. Go to Zawadi Bookstore right here in the, in our community on Jefferson Avenue. And the Hollies will, will order this book. That's how I got this book. I had some, this is what I need. You don't have it. Order it. And I'll come back and get it get it from you. So, because uh, we want to support our, our community. And in chapter four, she title of the of the chapter is The Anxiety and Depression Beneath It All. In just this first chapter, she says, if you attend a church, your pastor may make reference to depression from time to time and how you ought to not let life get you to the point of depression. My own pastor has said that people can be depressed with a Bible on their lap. He says this to acknowledge that having faith in God or being a regular Bible reader does not inoculate you to depression. Even if you've never stepped foot in a church, Someone has inevitably advised you not to let life get you down. And then I want to juxtapose, I want to talk about these two, two realities. And then scripture says, Paul in Philippians 4 and 6 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And so I can imagine many of our clergy brethren and sister in, uh, <laughs> when folks come to the church and say, Pastor, I'm dealing with depression. And we know that that there is alignment with depression and anxiety. And I can imagine sometimes maybe instead of listening and hearing someone's story, somebody pulled mm. out the Bible. It says, Sister, the word of God says, <laughs> be anxious for nothing. Right. And so you see the kind of uh, conflict that people are dealing with within our community when we know the reality of anxiety and depression and mental health challenges are there 
But we also know the other reality that a lot of people are going into our churches. And so how do we navigate through those realities? Well, Pastor, it's great to talk to you uh, today and to the audience. It's an honor to be here. That's a great question. It also can be a controversial question in many regards, but um, let's dive into the controversy. I think when it comes to That's right. um, clergy and uh, especially mental health, it's easy for us to go to our default. Our default is to give a positive affirmation, positive homily, find a couple scriptures that affirm the mindset that you should be able to press through uh, whatever you're facing and you should be positive, have a healthy outlook on life all the time, uh, simply because of your relationship with Jesus Christ. But anyone who has lived on this earth more than a day understands that that is not always the case. I would offer up another scripture, Job 14, and one where Job says, man that is born of a woman is of a few days, and those days are full of trouble. And the reality of this life is um, we are constantly bombarded from without and within with things that will cause our mood and our mental health to be significantly impacted. I would always say to clergy, don't go into territory that you're not equipped to go into. And I don't think that is a slight on any clergy. I think that is an awareness to understand that um, there are certain things that we should be very careful to uh, address if we are not uh, equipped and qualified to bring up. Um, and so, yes, I do believe that in the midst of all those things, God will give you peace that passes all understanding. But Paul wrote those same uh, epistles from a, a prison cell, you know, so he was in trouble. And I'm sure Paul had ups and down days, days where he wanted to give in, but he held true to his faith. And I think we live in that tension where we know what the reality of life is. Uh, we have to deal with the hard times of life, but we hold on to a faith that says God has a way to pull us through this. Um, but that in no way negates the reality of what people live with day in and day out. And we cannot be so spiritually arrogant where we dismiss the realities of a person uh, when they come into our office who are really hurting, struggling with mood disorders, uh, personality disorders. And we just try to push uh, scripture onto them to try to tell them to read this and feel better uh, when we really need to be steering them to people who are equipped to help them work through these challenges from a more scientific, skills-based perspective. People are struggling right now. I can tell you what I'm seeing. I get a sense it's almost like mm -hmm. a fog, a malaise that's kind of over our, our community right now. And people are just kind of, they're struggling. I mean, they're, I, like, I've never seen anything like this, really. And we've been through a lot, but I'm talking about the season that we're in. I, I just see a lot of people struggling with their mental and emotional mm -hmm. selves. One of the things that's so detrimental with COVID is that it took away our community. And I think that's one aspect of us just as a people where we are historically communal. That's what we do. You know, we are a people of community. We thrive together in community. And when that was stripped away, a lot of our supports got stripped away with it. So if you want to look at it from a more spiritual perspective, you know, we lost the ability in many ways to get congregate as fellow believers. Schools became closed. Uh, community organizations shut down. Community buildings shut down. We lost that. Yeah, we've lost that. And that's part of who we are as a people. We found a lot of strength in our numbers, found a lot of strength in connecting with other people. And that significantly impacts a person's mental health. When now, when I'm accustomed to gathering, I have to do life on my own. And I said that on top of social justice matters that continuously uh, seem to rear their head and a narrative that uh, will never go away, that demeans and belittles our people. It has created this uh, perfect storm, unfortunately, that has significantly impacted and enhanced uh, many mental health challenges that our people are facing day in and day out. It is a very hard world to live in. And you try to go to social media and you find more things that make you feel bad. You try to go around the corner to the local store and you hear more things that make life bad. So we're bombarded with these things that continuously impact our well-being. And unfortunately, money's being stripped from programs and things that support mental health. And they're going to things 
that really won't do anything to make us feel better. So let's talk a little bit about stigma. One of the things that is a barrier at times within our community is the fact that and we know the reality, you know, of just just the challenges of, of operating in this country. And then you put on top of that structural institutional racism, systems that are anti-Black, and then the trauma of our past, and then current practices, the microaggressions that we deal with, uh, our children being in uh, insufficient schools, uh, we have r- racial segregation in our housing, an unhealthy relationship with law enforcement. We have all these things that are just pressing down on our realities as, as African Americans here in this community um, and across the country. You know, sometimes I think it's amazing that we we function even at the level that we function at, right? And so at some levels, people will say, well, there's a Absolutely. there's an alarming rate of of mental illness or in, in our community. And I think that's true. I do. But what do you expect? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Uh, because they've just kind of put us in these situations where you just, you know, just the struggle just to maintain your sanity is part of the battle. And so, and in the church, we have to be that space where we can have these conversations, right? I mean, you know, again, mm-hmm. and I think you're absolutely right that, you know, we should not get engaged in, you know, therapy and stuff like that if we're not trained to do that. But we got, I think we have to be that kind of that first layer, that entry point where a person can say, hey, I'm struggling and I need some, I need mm-hmm. some help. But there's, it seems to be still, we're still wrestling with that stigma when it comes to, to mental health. You know, it's, it's, it is still unfortunate because we, we still live in a mindset, and I'm not saying this to negate the realities of spiritual warfare or even demonic oppression. You know, we believe those things are prevalent. However, there are people who really have some chemical unbalances, some very some some things going on mentally that you all. It, and how oh, I feel, I I hope folks understand when I say this. You no, can't you just pray it away. No, if that makes any sense. You know, people need to be able to speak to someone who can help them see why they feel this way and help them navigate through these challenges that as pastors, if we're not trained specifically in dealing with mental health issues, then we need to forward them to those people. But as pastors, number one, we have to make sure we have the awareness of what's available. And we have to also understand we're not the end all be all. That again is no slight to clergy, but we are not a one-stop shop in many regards as a person. We have to understand, again, our personal limits when it comes to that. And we have to be the first ones to be courageous enough to talk about how to remove the stigma around mental health. Just because you have a mental health issue, it does not mean anything is wrong with you. It doesn't mean you're bad or you're evil. It means you have a challenge, like someone who may have high blood pressure or someone who may have some other kind of issue that they're trying to work through. And I was sharing, talking with someone in a therapy session the other day. And it's like, it's, it's interesting how we will find no problem going to somebody to treat our physical ailments. Why do we have such a problem around going to someone to help us deal with our mental ailments when we use our mind so much more in so many regards? And so we have to be the ones to champion, champion destroying that stigma, or we will continue to have generations of people who stay stuck in trauma because let's call it like it is. We are people who have experienced trauma since the first moment we stepped foot on this continent. That's all we know. We, we have a history of trauma and there's books written on it and there are articles written on it. That's all we know. It's trauma. And so, as you said a little bit, a little while ago, to expect anything different is almost idiotic. We are, that's all we know is trauma. All we know is pain. All we know is fight. And so we as clergy, because our voice still resonates in the community, we have to be the ones to champion this. And if this is the first stop that people say, I'm going to talk to my pastor, amen. But pastors, we got to also understand, okay, now I need to forward you to someone else, whether in the congregation or to a, a community organization that I am comfortable sending you to that I know you'll get the help. You know, one of the things that, that and I'm glad you brought that up, but I want to spend a I want to park it there a little bit and talk about evil, the devil, demons, and all this other stuff. And- if a person, or just because a person has a mental health challenge, and, and if we're honest, we all do, right? So I mean, so Amen. I mean, so it's just those <laughs> who are willing to admit, you know, and acknowledge what's Amen. happening with them. That's right. And, and so, uh, um, 
that that does not mean that there is a the presence of evil, the presence of demons, or it, it doesn't mean that there's something inherently deficient or Absolutely. contaminated about that person. And so how do we move ourselves away from that still, I think, very pervasive thought process of quickly trying to jump from the reality of, of mental health challenges and then trying to move it into the into the places of deep dark you know spiritual attacks mm-hmm. how do mm-hmm. we how do we get us to get out of that i think you 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 touched on something that we all need to do i think when you said all of us have some kind of mental health challenge all of us and i think the more honest we are with the fact that we have these kinds of struggles it will help us to not put such a stigma on it You show me a pastor that has not at some point struggled with some anxiety or depression. And if somebody says, I haven't, I'll show you someone who doesn't tell the truth. If you, if the you father deal of with all people, lies is the devil. And if you, so you want to look for you, so you want to look for you want to look for the demonic. I see the demonic not in the fact that you might have a mental health struggle, but I see the presence of the demonic in your inability to tell That's, the truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so being honest about the fact that I struggle with these things, I, you know, I have no qualms about saying I struggle, see a therapist fight through my own stuff, because the reality is this, if we're not courageous enough to normalize struggle, if we're not courageous enough to normalize that we have these challenges as well, then of course, people aren't going to do it. They're not going to show that vulnerability. I think it takes the leaders to be able to say, I am not ashamed to say there are days that I don't want to come here. There are days that I am not up to standing in the pulpit. There are days that I'm not even up to life. I just want to sit and go into my own shell because the reality is life is hard. Situations come that are extremely difficult. But if we're only trying to preach to make ourselves look as if we have it all together all the time, we're creating an unrealistic standard for people to make them feel like I have to attain to this superhuman uh, level of life when no one had that but Jesus Christ. And our problem is, is that we don't want to see, we don't want to appear vulnerable to people and we have to. And that's the only way we can begin to break these things because people take their cues from what they see in front of us. It's like a child. They take their cues from what their parent does or whoever that main voice in their life is. That's where they take their cues from. And if people take their cues from their clergy, their pastor, uh, their spiritual advisor, whatever, and that person isn't willing to be honest about their struggle and their fight and their process, People won't do it as well. We have to take the hats and the airs off and just be real about life. You know, it's a fight right, right. and that's okay. And the, and the witness of Jesus too is in that we see that he he himself that took moments where he, you know, when it became overwhelming for him. And if we look at the the the, the scriptures that, you know, they kept pressing on him and he, and he says, you know, he had to, let me get mm-hmm. on the other side of this river, man. And let me just kind of, <laughs> kind of just take a moment and, 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 and kind of, you know, recalibrate uh-huh. myself. Right. And, and I tell you, you know, mm-hmm. pastors, mm-hmm. men and women, you know, spiritual leaders, whatever you're in, when you are feeling those moments, when you feel overwhelmed, that you need to take a break that you got to just put it on pause for a moment, do it, do, do it. it, do it. We do not impress God when we ignore <laughs> the no emotions means. that he has given to us. Right. It's like, it, Absolutely. it's like the, you know, and I, 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 I'm guilty of this. I work on this every day, you know, and it's just like, it's like those, those engine lights on your car, man, you ignore that stuff at your peril. Act like you don't see it. It's put something be. over it. You know, you know, you put some paper over it so you can't see it. That don't mean it ain't there. Absolutely. And so when when those things, when those things start, and you know what they are, no one can tell you what that you know that feeling that you have, that you Absolutely. just feel like, man, I just can't, I can't do it today. But if you say, But the Lord, Lord, give me strength, I got to do this, man. No, pay attention. Because God Absolutely. is speaking to you. Absolutely. And that feeling is, is just saying to you, well, I got this. Yeah, take a break. Take a break. <laughs> you know, take I'm the break. creator of the heavens and the earth, the universe, the he- everything. I got I can, this. I can, I can, <laughs> you I got can this take a day control. off by you taking Absolutely. that day off. 
don't mean the kingdom going to fall because you didn't show up for work today. That's right. It's right. still going to stand. But we got to get our people to, <laughs> to see that and not only see it, but to put practices in, you know, thank you for your, your transparency about, you know, your willingness for counseling and have a spiritual practice that will include paying attention to your mental health. You know, and I, I do every day when I, you know, I do a check-in with myself. And here's the thing too, you know, some of us are so churchy, we don't take the time. So for big, for me, one of my big practices is, is meditation, just, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. shutting it down and just being very aware of my own being. How do I really feel in this moment? You know, and being honest right. about that, right. right? And I'm not talking about prayer. I do, I'm talking about before I pray, I'm just saying, I got to... Sometimes I got to talk to me before I talk to God. And maybe some folks, they don't like that. Mm. But I'm just, tell, I'm just telling you what worked for me, right? It, because I got to know Absolutely. how I'm doing. Right. right. What's going on in here? Right. And I don't look to God to tell me that. He's equipped me. He's equipped mm. me to that. He's given me mm -hmm. the emotions, the, mm -hmm. the, the tools, the things. So do those, those check-ins, right? Yeah. And if the calibration is off. So important. Do what you got to do, because here's the thing that happens. When we're not right, we transfer our sickness, mm. our instability, our, our lack of calibrating of our own emotions. And we think we're helping folks, mm -hmm. but at times we can spew that, you know, madness on That's other right. folks. That's right. And see, these things, we treat scriptures and we only want to take it one way. But there's that scripture that says evil communication corrupts good manners. You think about it like this. If we're not in a healthy place and my communication with people is now toxic, it corrupts those who are around me. And so here is the scary part. And I have to always be conscious of this. And I've failed sometimes in this. And I have to be honest about that. On Sunday mornings, we have a captive audience of people that we see and we don't see now in this very virtual world. And if I am not where I need to be personally, there is a high risk of me saying some things that could really negatively impact the people who are listening to what I'm saying. And we have to be careful about that because, again, you have to guard your heart, you know, out of the mouth, blessings and curse, life and death. You know, it's, we have to be mindful of what's going on in here. And I love the illustration about the check engine light. Before you go to the mechanic, you know something's going on in your car. You know something's you know something's off. You know if it's pulling a little bit or if it's not speeding up like it should. And then you say, I should take it to the person who knows how to fix it. But if you're not aware with this temple, that there's some things in this temple that's off base, you don't even know what to pray about. Help me somebody. You don't, I don't know. I have to check in here so I can go to God and say, God, this stuff is feeling off to me. So I need you to show me what I need to do from now. But if you're not aware of what's happening inside of you, you know, you I've had these it. moments where, you know, I begin to to intercede and pray for someone else. And the voice of the Lord says, before you get to that, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I already know about that. So you're not giving me any new information. Right. <laughs> But I want to have well a conversation <laughs> about what's going on with you right at this moment, you. right? Because the reason Absolutely. you're praying to me about them is because you're trying to avoid having a conversation with me about you. That is our biggest problem. We never want to look in the mirror. And I, I've said to Friendship this, this whole year, I said, this year is about looking at myself. You know, as much as I want you all to be where God wants you to be, I can't make anybody do anything. The only person who I have to answer for at the end of the day is me, myself, and I. I have to look in the mirror first to say, okay, God, where am I? And 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 like you said, you know, we, it's so easy. It's so easy to project. It's so easy to put off like we have it all together. And I'm here to help you. But are you helping yourself? Are you getting yourself where you need to be so you can be most effective? Part four of our four-part four series called You Are Not Alone. And we've just have been talking about just mental health, uh, harm reduction, self-harm, and even suicide. Mm -hmm. And uh, Reverend Jackson and I will be leading a conversation talking, of just really amplifying some more stuff around faith and our mental health. And so uh, just share with the, the, our listeners why this is such an important conversation for us to have. I, I believe it's so important on, on multiple levels. First and foremost, you know, 
I believe people want to make sure that their walk is one, of course, that lines up with God. But we also have to understand that God has given us this life to live it to the fullest. And there's some things that we have to make sure lines up in here um, as we're lining up vertically. This is a space where we just need more honesty. We need more transparency among, in the kingdom about real life issues that people go through every day. And I think one of the things that has started to make the church, the church will never be ineffective. I believe that wholeheartedly, but it causes us to lose some of our oomph, for lack of better words, because we don't, we're not honest about just real life and real struggles. And I think this generation, especially, you know, the boomers are the boomers, but now we're in generation Z and, and generation alpha and all these new generations that are coming in and they're very blunt, direct, and they have to hear the honest truth about who God is and how God sees our mental health and how we should see our own mental health. And so I think this conversation about faith and mental health, suicide, all of these hard conversations that we avoid can't be avoided anymore because the world's not avoiding it. And most certainly our adversary is not avoiding it. And people need to be well informed about how God sees these things. And throughout everything that you go through, God loves you unconditionally and nothing and, can change. And suicide that. will so change that. Hopefully you take the time to tune so in. So if you have a loved one who uh, took their own life, just overwhelmed by the reality of, of the struggles that they were in, when they took their own life, they did not take God's love away from them. They did not take God's grace, his mercy. And so please don't think that what your loved one may have done has somehow created this permanent chasm between them and God, because that's not the God that, that I know. Yeah. I think we've sent a lot of people to hell oh, who's not there. Right. right. And, and uh, that's beyond uh, our pay grade. So if you're out there, if you're out there you know, sending people to hell, uh, you operate beyond your qualifications. <laughs> So stick to your job your description. Resume is, yes, you're, you're not qualified for you're that. You're fishing one. in somebody else's <laughs> pond, and you don't have a license. So you just need to just we just need no, to tell sir. tell them about the goodness and the grace and the love of the God that uh, absolutely just, even in spite of all of our shortcomings, just continues to love us absolutely. with a unconditional and unyielding love. And what a what a great great thing that is. Yeah. So it's we're amazing. done. Uh, it's been it's a amazing. wonderful conversation. We're going to do this again uh, for sure. Uh, this is the Igniting Hope podcast. I'm Pastor George Nicholas, and you know it's my honor and privilege to to serve you today. And thank you once again for our guest, Reverend Edward Jackson, over at Friendship Baptist Church, Clinton Street, Clinton yeah, Street, or oh, Reverend Ware's Street. Church. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah, <laughs> great saints that have come out of friendship, and there's some great saints that are yes, still there. Yes, indeed. And so we will continue to be praying for just a, a great prosperity and the move of God with, within that congregation and all throughout the city. So thank you so much for listening to Igniting Hope podcast. Love you, brother Jackson. We love you out there. There's nothing you can do about love it. You, man. Love you, you can man. talk about us all you want to. That's right. I, I tell people, you talk about me all you want to, but guess what? You, I'm still going to love you. You can't stop me from doing that. So I can't appreciate stop that. y'all. So thank you. And until we come together again. Well, it's been Ignite and Hope Radio. Thank you for tuning in for your weekly dose of hope. And we ask you listeners to please share, like, subscribe, whether it be on Spotify, Apple, whatever your podcast listening platform is, share it with a friend and tell us what you think. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and be healthy.